Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to look at the heating system of the tower room. This is going to be a fairly short video compared to my other videos but we're going to look at the system that I have selected and then we're going to install it. In the house that I have already renovated which is on the left hand side of the farm I have installed the traditional hot water radiators and the water is heated up by a oil burner because I have no gas in the street. But the current legislation in my country uh, prohibits you to install a new oil burner. I cannot do that anymore. And there is no gas in my street either, so I don't have a lot of options left. Except, of course, a heat pump. So now let's talk about a heat pump. The farm I live in goes back many, many centuries and it goes as far back as the year 900. And of course, over time, people have been adding extensions to the farm. There is the farmer house where the rich farmer used to live and then you have an attachment to it, an annex, where the maids and the servants used to live. So that is why I have so many rooms. Now upstairs in the tower room, I decided to create a dining room. But it is not a daily dining room. It's an occasional dining room when I have just a few visitors. So I need a heating system that can heat it up very quickly. And then when I don't need it, I can turn it down. So a heating system with very, very low inertia. That is so important because my main dining room is downstairs. And yes, I know I have a lot of chairs standing here, but I have three daughters with their boyfriends. And of course, I also have a girlfriend myself. So that fills up the room very quickly. The heat pump is claimed to be a very efficient system and I guess it probably is. And it's also claimed to be a very environmental friendly solution. But you still need electricity and as far as I know, most of the electricity is not produced yet by green energy. So I think this is a bit of a hoax. But besides that, so you actually have two types of heat pumps. You have the air water type and the air air type. Now, for the tower room, I can't install an air air system because I just don't have the ducting in place and so I would have to change way too many things to put all that air ducting into that room. Now the alternative is a air water system. So basically you're extracting heat from the air and then you're using that heat uh, to warm up uh, water which is then going to your floor heating. The only problem with that is that it's a low temperature system, so 35 degrees. And it's really great if you have a, a room or a house where you can put floor heating in or even wall heating. It's perfect. But it's only perfect if you're going to use that room basically constantly. It has a huge inertia. It takes a hell of a time for that floor to heat up because it's only 35 degrees centigrade. You can imagine how long it takes for all the air in that room to be heated up. So for an occasional room, that to me doesn't fly. I will install it downstairs where we are, where we live in the kitchen and so on, but I'm not going to install it in the actual tower room there. I need to find a system that turns on very quickly and turns off very quickly. And therefore, I have opted for something very different. So I decided to go for an infrared heating system. So let's have a closer look on what that is and what it does for us, what are the advantages and the disadvantages. Now infrared is a wavelength of sunlight that you can't see. And it's that wavelength that warms you up when you stand outside in the sun in a winter's day. You can feel the heat on your face uh, because of the sun. In other words, infrared is heating up subjects, but it's not heating up the air. And that is very important. And that's why an infrared heating system is so interesting because it's not going to heat up the air volume in that room. It's going to heat up the uh, objects in the room. And we people, we are objects. The good thing about that infrared system is that they have avoided the harmful infrared area because there are some parts of the infrared uh, zone that are actually harmful for you. So we always talk about far end infrared for indoor heating. So make sure if you're going to buy an infrared heater that you go for far end infrared because you also have heaters for the outside and that's a different wavelength, it's a different technology. It's a very simple system. You don't need a lot of infrastructure work. All what you're going to need is a power plug wherever you're going to install the panel. The panels, and you'll see them in a few seconds, are very nice. They blend in nicely. 
it, you don't even see them. You can put them on the ceiling, you can put them on the walls, you can place them wherever you want to place them, but of course you need to place them in the proper place. And again, uh, they only need electricity. Uh, they have an efficiency of one to one, so if it's a thousand watts panel, it's going to produce a thousand watts, which is really good. Of course, a heat pump is better. A heat pump is probably about 130% to, uh, of efficiency, which is, of course, better. But okay, uh, it has other drawbacks, as we explained. The other thing about these panels is that it's, like I said before, it's heating up the subject or the object in the room and not the air. So in other words, if you have a little draft here and there, um, the air will escape, obviously. And if you're heating up the air with a normal convection system, then you're going to lose that heat. Now with infrared panels, you, we work with radiation, right? So we having these infrared uh, rays coming at us and that warms us up and it's not the air itself. So that is a very positive thing. So overall, there is a tendency that these infrared panels are more efficient in these rooms that don't need to be heated up permanently. And depending who you talk to, you could have up to 7 to 10% more efficiency than with a normal radiator. So let's have a look on these panels, what this is about and what you're going to need to install it and then we'll install it. Now, like anything else, you will have to dimension the panels. So how many watts do you need for that specific room? Well, that depends on the size of the room. So you multiply the length, the height and the width together and then you multiply it with X amount of watts. Now, how much these watts are, that depends on the type of the room. Is it a living room? If it's a bathroom? Is it a kitchen? because you will need different temperatures in the different rooms, just like any other heating system, actually. And it also depends very heavily on how well the house is insulated, if you have outer walls, if you have windows with double glazing or triple glazing. And as you have seen in the tower room, I have double glazing, I have a lot of insulation, I have very thick walls. So that room uh, is very, very well insulated. So I can get away with about 25 watts per cubic meter and this is how I dimensioned my panels. I got the two panels to meet my requirements. So in my case, I need two panels of 800 watts. And if you're going to buy these panels, make sure that you buy good quality panels. I'm not saying you have to buy this brand right here. But what I'm saying is try to buy non-Chinese panels because those are crap. Those are not very good. They will bend and they are not very efficient. The panels that I'm using are 100% made in Germany because that's where I live and I have three years of warranty. I also decided to have a wired thermostat into the wall. So I have a thermostat in that room for those two panels and I can actually program it. You can also get a thermostat uh, which is based on Wi-Fi or even on an app. So this is really entirely up to you. The panels themselves, you can even have a picture on the panel, you can have them surrounded with LED lights. There's all kinds of possibilities with those panels. In fact, I even have seen some that are like a mirror. So a lot of options on those panels. So here we have the manual that comes with it. This is very handy, by the way. This is a piece of paper that you can put on the wall. And then all you need to know is where these markers are on that paper. And that's where you put the uh, supports on so it doesn't fall off the wall. Very handy. And it even comes with a couple of uh, bolts. Put the panel either on the ceiling or on the wall. And in my case, it's going to go on the wall. Now let's have a closer look on the panel itself. Try to place it like this so you can see it a bit better. And this is the panel in a nice white rail color. And see how thick that is. It is about a centimeter and a half, nothing more than that. This is the place where I'm going to install the panel. And you can see that I already have prepared a power outlet inside the plinth. So I placed my um, template on the wall on one side, made sure that it's right in the middle. Now we need to make it level. And let's see. So this is certainly not level. It has to go up quite a bit. And I think this way. 
So that is now level. I'm just going to put some more tape up so I can properly drill. So I'm going to pre-drill the hole in the right place. <laughs> drilled so now I can remove my template all right let's put the bolt in you want to have sufficient space so it fits properly and on the panel now we need to reposition the um, catch all the attachments because otherwise that's not going to work too well so let me reposition them in the right direction and I need to do it on all four of them so let's see if we can actually put the panel up of course I'm on my own and that's always a little bit more difficult to do but I don't think it's going to be much of a problem okay now that is in and the panel is installed. That is the panel now installed. I might cut off this cable a little bit because I think it's a little bit too long and I might turn around actually the wall socket so the cable goes up straight. But these are small things that I can do afterwards. But I think this looks quite all right and it's not that obvious that we have a panel here. Okay, so this is the first panel which is now installed and I think this is looking quite all right. Um, it blends in nicely into the wall and um, it's present and it's not present and that's what I like about these panels. So now it's time for the thermostat. Now I already got my cabling coming out of the wall but the socket that I have in there, the housing itself is in the wrong direction and so I need to rotate it because the thermostat fits to those two bolts and they should be horizontal. So that's the first thing I'm going to do now and just turn it around and then we start looking on the schematic. I don't know if I can actually turn it like this. Yes, I can. That was a piece of cake. So now I need to lock that back into place. So I have my tubes already marked. So this is, uh, let's see, power in and this is to my infrared. So we got a couple of colors here. My blue is my neutral. So I'm going to run on the neutral. My brown one is my life, basically. And then I have the shaded green, yellow one. Uh, this is my ground. And I have the same inside this tube. So. And now we need to strip the cables. Now I know there's special strippers that you can use for this. But I like to use my little pliers here because I know more or less how deep I can cut. So here's the thermostat housing and the connector that goes in there. So this is where all the cables need to go to. And then the front part will plug in. So let's see um, how we need to cable that up. So this is the cable diagram that I'm going to use. The blue wire is also what I have. This is my neutral, so I will hook that up. So it's connected both to the end and to the cable going to my heating elements. And then my life, uh, which is the red one, in my case it will be a brown cable, uh, that's going to go to the life on the um, connector. And then it also goes at the same time to the com. And then this is the switch that will turn on and off actually the heaters, depending on the thermostat. And then the other side goes back to the heating element. So let's start with that. And here is that little block um, with all the labeling on. So you can't really go wrong with it. And then on the other side, you have the screws that you need to tighten up things. So let me hook that up and then I'll show you. I don't know if you know this kind of connectors, but these are quick connectors. You just slide in the cable and then it locks by itself. It's very handy stuff. That's it, you know, you can see now that's connected. And I will also do it for the second blue one, which I'm gonna make now a little bit shorter. After a little bit of fiddling, I got this all sorted out. So now I need to push it back in 
and then I need to connect it. And the problem is a bit, this is very stiff cabling. So let's see if we can get it deep enough in to make sure that everything fits properly. I hope it will work and it should work. So let's see. Now we need to connect this up in the back. it all back and then lock it down with the two screws and we should be good. And now I should be able to put this panel up and and now that is installed. Oh, I need to get the dirty fingers off. Done. So I also installed now the light switch because that was still hanging out. So now let's give it a try. So I turned on the power and as you can see, we've got 19 degrees right now. And uh, let's see. These are the programs. So I've set the unit to manual uh, through the menus and I didn't bother showing you all the menus because that depends on thermostat to thermostat. But as you can see, I've set it to 21 and a half degrees. Right now we got 20 degrees and I have the heat actually uh, pointing on. So now the heat is on and I can actually feel that radiation coming out of these panels and it really feels nice. Uh, they get a little bit warm, but not too warm. You can still put your hand on it, uh, but you can actually feel it's like the sun is shining on me when you stand in front of those panels. And of course I know the sun also comes inside for the moment. But the panels, they really feel very nice and comfortable. So I think this is going to be a very, very comfortable uh, arrangement with these infrared panels. And I think this was the right choice for this room. But of course, the proof is in eating the pudding. And we'll see when it gets colder outside what this is going to do. So folks, we've come to the end of this video. And I really hope that you enjoyed it. And what you have seen is that the installation of infrared panels is really not all that difficult. Of course, time will tell uh, if those are really efficient and if they can really heat up the room in the winter time, because right now outside it's around 18 to 19 degrees centigrade. So it's very hard to say that it can heat up the room, but I could actually feel the radiation when I was standing about three meters away from them. So I think this will be quite all right. In my next video, I'm going to talk about the lights that we have installed right here in the tower room. And then there's one more video where we're going to look at some of the finished room with all the furniture and ornaments that I have placed inside. That will be an additional video. Thank you for viewing. Bye bye.